So this is Sarah Murray. She's the founding board member of Place Technologies. Uh, she's a corporate innovation professional um, with 15 plus years of experience. Her passion is at the intersection of technology and social impact. Sarah brings play to life through exciting and interactive examples of play that will shape our future and benefit our communities and our environment. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me this morning. And also, I think. Um, I don't need to thank anyone because Kathy did an, an amazing job of thanking everyone, but she didn't actually thank the powerhouse that is herself. So if everyone can give. Because <clears throat> yeah, we wouldn't be, wouldn't be here without her. Um, so I'm just going to work out how the clicker works. So, so yeah, so this is this is me, and I'm not great behind a lectern, so I'm going to walk this way and that way. I'm also very softly spoken, so at some point you will and you won't hear me. Oh, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people are standing talkers and others are walkie talkers, and I'm a walkie talker. <laughs> but, yeah, so I had, um, I've had a really rare privilege... <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, that's better. That's better. Um, okay, Derek. So yeah, so I've had a tr tremendous, um, tremendous privilege. I had, um, and all great privileges born of uh, tremendous challenge as well. So, um, as most people may relate to, I uh, couldn't afford a home, and I got incredibly frustrated by it. And I'm a deeply um, geeky, technical child and just wanted a computer game where I could buy a house and I knew how much it would cost and it would arrive on time and preferably it would arrive on the back of flying robots. They would drop it, they would print it, they would clean up after it and I would be done and I would have no mortgage. So that was what I wanted um, and, uh, and it was interesting because it all started because my husband and I bought a, a block of land sort of out of about an hour out of Sydney um, and then uh, went to call a builder and um, that builder said, um, and I'm, I'm going to do the accent he did, but I really hope it's not insensitive, and but I'll give it a go. And it was something along the lines of, um, oh, I don't know, love, you might be tire kicking. Um, I don't get out of bed for a million five, and if you're really serious, get your husband to call me. And he hung up. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and so I thought, th th this industry needs a customer service overhaul. Like, this is, <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> so I got very, very, and at the same time, I was working for Westpac bank and um, it were, they had turned 200 and so they um, bought the TED Institute out and I had this um, amazing opportunity, serendipitous opportunity, which most opportunities are, right? You don't plan them, they sort of uh, arrive and then it's your job to take them. And then so we um, created this mock-up, which was basically like The Sims. Has anyone played The Sims? Yeah, yes, fabulous, right? So um, where you, all we what we did was we, I spent some time over in China, I was very interested in the 3D printing of course and realised that that's, that was actually fraught with peril and so ended up going towards more ma uh, modern methods of construction, factory based stuff and so at the time then went over to China and had a look at lots of factories and understood how it worked and then broke down all the components of a house into these pieces and then basically created a Sims build mode that you, was real and was attached to real parts and those parts would then go to a factory and we we were, at the time that I gave that TED talk in 2017, um, we were really about to kick off because we had US based customers and it was all very exciting and then this really lesser known uh, American um, president, um, you might have heard of him, John Donald Trump put a 25% tariff on everything coming into the US and our business model tanked and it was over before it started. But it was interesting in the sense that what it did was it sort of opened up my eyes to this incredible catalytic change that we were, that we are a part of right now. And of course it evolved and I got to do other interesting things with it which also happens. But this is my favourite way of representing the incredible convergent catalytic change. And you'll be like, what's this got to do with play? But I'm getting there. So we've got up here on the left, you've got a house. This is how a house was built in the 1950s. This is um, what a computer looked like in the 1950s. That was half a million dollars worth of computer in the 1950s, took up one whole room. Would have been very hot, very unpleasant, very loud. Um, and that is social media in the 1950s on the bottom. All right, flash forward to 2000. 
We still built the house exactly the same way, and in terms of equivalent cost, it was exactly the same price. Meanwhile, that's what a computer looked like. Who owned one of those or something that looks similar to it? Yes, well, weren't they marvellous? Um, and you could probably only word process on it and maybe play a little bit of solitaire in between whatever you were doing, but we loved them anyway. Um, and that was social media. Is anyone old enough to know what that is? Yeah, yeah me too. Um, and then flash forward to 2020, so 20 years later, finally, finally our built environment is catching up. Thank you, McKinsey's and the world that put out papers and researchers. Thank you, academic, academia, thank you. Because you guys went out there and you started to say, hey, actually, um, we should think about our built environment like products. They should be integrated with technology. They should have different job descriptions. And, and this is the world that we're in now. And at the same time, what's our computation done? It's leapt forward massively. You know, we've all got supercomputers in our hip pockets. It's phenomenal. And the stuff I'm going to show you, the fact that I, we can build that and do that so cheaply is astronomical. It, compared to when The Sims first came out, you know, they needed to spend $20 million to build the computer game engine to run the thing, you know, we can now just knock it up, you know, for a hundred bucks. You know, it's amazing. Um, and it's all made possible because of the advances in computation. And at the same time, down here, that's what social media looks like. So that's the next iteration of the bulletin board, where you go into these three-dimensional spaces and you have different faces. And when Jess talks to you after I do about identity and what that means for us, it's amazing. And this is where the play bit comes in, right? This is where the play bit comes in. Um, and of course, what, you know, it's, it's also about mindset shift. So what got us here won't get us there. So we're going to bring play to life in a very real way and then I've also got some other examples from other industries that I think are really fun. So I'm going to have a go at doing this in this order. Do people have laptops um, on them or phones or phones may or may not work. Have a crack at it but we'll do a like a, a play along with me type thing as well so you can watch on the screen. Um, so what I'm going to get you guys to do, actually I'll show you the experience first and then I'll then I'll give you some something to do. Ready? This is what we built for a click. Here we go. will play better on your laptop. If you've got um, a Mac, it's available after this as well. So if you've got a Mac and you've got a lovely M1 Mac, you're going to need to change your settings to high, otherwise you'll get a bit of a flicker. Um, but if you are on a PC, it's going to work just fine and um, it's going to work just fine on your phones or should do. Um, the I want to talk a little bit about um, game psychology before I do the, the play along. Um, and so 
really one of the things that we've, we worked out on our journey, so um, with Place Technologies, what they do now is they, um, they work with communities, they work with governments, they work with property developers, um, and they use these metaverse-like technologies and they use these um, gamified principles, if you like, to engage communities, um, to make buildings cheaper to run, to make, um, you know, it, it's, it's really quite exciting stuff. And I'll give you, you know, one example is there's a property development in North America and that property development was built on, um, in Minneapolis, was built on a, um, a grave site or a special area for the um, Indigenous people in that area. And typically what would happen in that situation is they would go to the council once they get the proposal to develop something and they would say, oh, no, 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 you can't use this. Even though ironically, that currently, that space, it's it's a dump. It was uh, in the 90s, yes, it used to be something amazingly culturally significant, but, um, and of course if, for them it still is, but in the 1970s a roller rink was broken down and they just dumped it there in that space. So it is a it is an unsightly, unusable space despite its heritage. And so what the developer was able to do is working with us, say, okay, yep, we will put a net zero community on here. There will be a metaverse replica of this development, but you can also go in and at the push of a button in the virtual space, that development disappears and we've created a three-dimensional representation of what life would have been like for the community that lived there originally. So rather than just protecting space that's unused, all of a sudden the space can be used, it's used productively, and it has historical and, and um, uh, uh, archaeological significance. So these technologies are really amazing. They're hap we're using them now, and it's all happening because we are so programmed for play. So let's talk about a little bit about this, and then you're going to see this come to life. So goals and rewards, we are absolutely obsessed with goals and rewards. Um, badges, leaderboards, um, these things are part of our being, we, we need them. Um, offering control, this is seriously the most fundamental part in my view anyway. So when it came to us developing um, place, what we realised was all of the feelings I was feeling about not being able to buy a home, all of that just boiled down at the core to not having control. I didn't have control over my environment and that didn't feel good. So all of these technologies, what they're allowing people to do is increase their sense of control, choice, give us choice. And I'm going to show you a bunch of examples about that in a sec. Um, mapping the journey is really important. I mean, um, everyone will remember the time when you had to order takeaway and you had no idea when or if it would arrive, right? We, ne we now live in a world where we know from point A to point B what's going to happen and where we are along that. And that is speaking deeply to our need. These, these are playful things. These are journeys. These are goals, these are quests that we're achieving, right? Getting your takeaway on time. Um, and then competition and exclusivity. These two are totally fascinating because depending on who we are as individuals, um, we may respond very differently to it. So some people see competition as a very personal thing. So uh, your personal best when you're running or something of that nature. And other people see um, competition as a very outward thing. So they want to be the top of the leaderboard on their peloton, you know, where they've got their pelotoning in their house and someone else is pelotoning in their house. Um, but they were faster than that other person pelotoning. And, but that's all tapping into the same psychology. Um, and then exclusivity as well. So being able to get into a part of a virtual environment that no one else gets access to. Being able to get something earlier, faster. We, we love that stuff. Um, I'm much more interested in the top three three, because I'm, I'm not sure the bottom two always play to the nicest side of our nature, but they are important nonetheless. All right, so if we can switch back please to my laptop and let's go and explore. Can I just put this down or turn it off? Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you see? Yep, yep. So it'll, it's going to be really interesting because if you guys, if some of you get in here, you will pop up in here as I walk around. Um, we can share, you will, whatever you say will 
pop up here. So this could be cacophonous and crazy, or <laughs> we'll see how we go. Um, so I'm I'm already in, but I'm I'm just going to press. You can see there's some instructions down the bottom. I'm just going to press R to to reload my scene because you can see I've found my way to Kathy. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to I'm actually just going to refresh the whole thing. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Do you guys mind um, maybe the screen and screen bit you were talking about before? Or they just want the slide with the QR code on. All right. So we'll take a couple of minutes um, to load. There we go. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to um, create an avatar. So this, if you think about the, the, the different elements of play that we were talking about, um, personalization, choice, and control, these are all really important things. So you can, um, I've already created an avatar, but if I was to create or load a new one, what that's going to do is that's going to kick me out to Ready Player Me. And this is fascinating. Who's heard, with, heard of or played with Ready Player Me so far? There is a phenomenal space race going on right now for companies that create your three dimension, your, your avatar, your version of you. And the, what they're doing, they're not just creating a version of you, they're creating a version of you that is interoperable with all of the new emerging metaverses out there. So this code that you'll get after you create this version of yourself, you can take it, you can put it into this experience we've created, you can put it into a hundred thousands of other different experiences and it also tracks all of your engagement across those. So if those other experiences involve you buying a virtual item and it's all tracked together. So there is, it's interesting at the, on the face of it, you might not think there's much in creating a simple avatar, actually talking about fundamental sets of rails for how you interact across these environments. Um, so I'm not gonna go through this process, but if I did, um, it would give me this code here. I strongly recommend that you write that down or create an account for yourself with Ready Player Me, but you don't have to. Um, and then that account, that code, you're going to stick back into your place first here. That's that avatar short code. I won't because I've already done it because <coughs> that's that's me. So I'm going to use this one. But when you put that in, it'll bring you up, um, and then it'll load it'll load the um, symposium, and you will get dropped into the office or should do. There we go. And so I'm going to wander around. Oh, thank you. There's an amazing scammy. So here we go. We've got our we've got our welcome to country, which was a super interesting conversation to have with Kathy as well. So we're recognising the um, traditional custodians of the land in on which the virtual environment was built, um, even though the cloud is somewhere else entirely. So um, you head in this way, and then you'll pop in this way. And then these are the islands. So these are the virtual islands that you're going to explore. And in order to win your Explorer badge, you need to go and find all of the speakers from the symposium that have, have participated in this. And this is where I'm going to have a little bit of a surreal personal experience, because this is me. Um, but she's going to say hi. She's going to tell me to go and find Kathy on the first island. So I'm, I'm going to go and do that, because Kathy's going to give me my next set of instructions. And then I'm thinking what Kathy and I, we haven't spoken about this, but what we could do is if you guys have created a lot of recordings of the various talks, um, we, we could pop them on here. Yeah, yeah. so people can, uh, so then once you get, um, you're gonna get this little um, pop-up error, but uh, don't sweat that, just, just go okay. It's just because we're going from one place to another. Uh, and now we're, we're entering the, the islands, so we're, we're dropping onto these islands, and they are incredibly fun. And I, I think this is where um, we're finding, you know, certainly the place team are finding that the environments they create are incredibly sticky, because it just speaks to this natural human desire to explore, to check stuff out, to stand on a high mountain and have a look at what it looks like around us. It's all very fundamentally human and, and wonderful. So you can see all these little speaky bubbles. This is, these, are, these are all of the speakers across all of the islands that you've got to go and explore. Um, you can crest, um, you're navigating with W, A, S and D, on, um, or if you're on your phone, you're, you're using your finger. Um, and then you're just using, has anyone been able to get in actually? I'm curious. 
Ah, oh, okay. So which, where are you? Oh, we can spend some time playing with this later. But, um, and then, so if I get up, if I get up close and personal with Kathy, she's going to say something to me. You look fantastic. This is how we designed you. This is interesting. This is how we envisioned you before we knew you. Was Dr. Kathy with these like blue <laughs> medical gloves? <laughs> it's, very unbeat, so. I, it's, it's absolutely you. Yeah. And then so. There, there she is. Hello. Hello again. Well, and she's welcoming us. Thank you. And she's got a challenge for us. And so this is part of that competition imperative. You know, I love a good challenge. Give me something to solve. Give me something to learn. Um, go look around and meet the owners. Um, go find fun facts and learn something new. So I won't get you guys to, you know, watch me um, go and find everyone, but I'll, I'll just do a quick quick little run around so we can go and find at least one or two. Um, some of the speakers are, you can walk on water and I let that let that do for you what it does, what it will. Um, yeah, and then um, they, some of them are a little bit tricky to find, but where are you? But then if you get up, get up to high, high peak, you can have a look around, see you go. So there's, there's one island that's all snowing, there's one that's all volcanic, there's one that's, um, you know, got a little bit of an eco theme to it. Um, and I'm trying to find the first one. But this is part of the exploration. This is part of the fun. This is part of the play. So it's just a completely interesting and complementary way to experience the content you've experienced over the last three days. So I am struggling to find number one, but I won't get you guys to watch me do that. I will let you, however, spend as much time as you like in this, and I would actually recommend you check it out once we've done the final one and we've actually put up all of the talks that all of the people have delivered over the last couple of days, because then you can, if you missed any talks, for instance, you can go and go and experience it. Um, and also there's stuff you can do in here as well. So you can, um, you can express yourself, so you can wave, you can formally bow should you choose to. You can feel tremendously dis victorious with some really bizarrely disjointed arms. Um, so, it, and you, it's it's loads of fun. And you can text message with people in there. And actually, if there are um, if there are multiple people online, you will hear them, and you, you can have go and meet them, and you can have a conversation as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to pause there. Um, how how are we for time? Because I the amazing Jess, I've got to throw to in a minute. 10, 10? So I, did you say I've got 10 more or it's time to go? It's time to go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. I, have, I, thought, I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it a little bit fun. Um, and I'll hand over to the wonderful Jess.